the most convincing time travel story I chose to watch. That seems very intriguing to me, and I want to see just how how convincing it can really be. Because time travel. <laughs> In 2006, in the city of Kyiv, Ukraine, police were called to deal with a confused man. When they arrived, they found a young man who was scared, didn't know where he was, and was dressed in strange, anachronistic clothing. Goof, yeah, I think. What is it? Shut Ukraine. Police were called to deal with a confused man. When they arrived, they found a young man who was scared, didn't know where he was, and was dressed in strange, anachronistic clothing, carrying a camera. Little did they know that they were possibly standing face to face with an actual time traveler. The man's name was Sergei Ponomarenko, and when the police asked him for his ID, he handed it to them, and the first thing they noticed was that it was issued from a country that didn't exist anymore. The Soviet Union. Ukraine was, of course, part of the Soviet Union and, uh, in the past, but the Soviet Union had dissolved almost a couple of decades ago at that point. So let's just say the police didn't see those IDs much anymore, especially on young people, and this guy looked like he was in his 20s. And yet his ID stated that his birth date was in 1932, and he matched the picture in the ID, so... Something didn't add up. When they asked him what day he thought it was, he answered April 23rd, 1958. And that's when the police said, okay, we're gonna take you to a little room where you can talk to the nice doctor. <laughs> You're crazy, doctor! So Sergei winds up in a mental and hospital with care of Dr. Pavel So the doctor played along with this whole idea, and he asked him if he could figure out or if he could remember how he wound up in 2006, even though he thought it was 1958. And as recorded by the doctor, Sergei said, quote, it was daytime, and I wanted to go for a walk in the city took my camera, but when I left my house, I saw a strange object that had a bell shape. And it was very strange, and it was flying in a strange way. It is difficult to explain what I was seeing. It might be better to look at the photos from my camera. Oh. And Dr. Kutrikov was curious, so he got a hold of the camera. He has photos. Because, I mean, what, what he described was pretty much what you would expect of media depiction of the UFO. <laughs> he actually has photos. That's it. Quite the thing he noticed was that it was an old rare Yashima flex. The doctor was a bit of a photographer himself, so he recognized the brand and knew right away that this was like an antique. Which is a problem because it used a type of film that hadn't been manufactured since the 1970s. You can't just take it down to the CBS to get it developed. So he called in a CBS to get it developed. So he called in a photography expert named Vadim Poisner. Vadim got the film out and he was able to see from the real info uh, that it was manufactured in 1956. But it was in perfect condition. So he developed the roll, and um, this is when everything just kept getting weirder. What he found on the roll were photos of Kiev, but clearly from a long time ago. All the cars, all the clothes, all the street signs, all were from the 50s. And there were photos of buildings that didn't exist anymore. And right there in front of those buildings was Sergei, with his girlfriend at the time, out enjoying a beautiful day, wearing the exact same clothes he was found in. And the last photo on the reel, just as Sergei had suggested, featured a bell-shaped UFO. When the doctor asked him about the UFO photo, Sergei said, quote, Now are you convinced I'm telling the truth? I so far do not understand what this object is and how something like that happened to me at the same moment when I took the picture and I went down to look at the camera and somehow I showed up in this year. I, Dr. Uh, Kutrikov. Actually, that's not nearly like as... I mean, the size is not exactly that significant. It does just look like a moving pigeon or something that happened to me at the same moment when I took the picture and I went down to look at the camera and somehow I showed up in this year. Dr. Kutrikov, being scientifically minded, hypothesized that if this was some kind of alien spacecraft, was some kind of alien spacecraft, it could perhaps have flown him across the universe at the speed of light and brought him back in a split second. And due to Einstein's theory... Scientific. Is that really the scientific hypothesis? Really? Like... The First thing you think of instead of, oh, maybe he edited the photo or something. I mean, yeah, this is 2006, but still, surely the first explanation is not, oh yeah, the UFO just brought him to this time. Second, and due to Einstein's theory of relativity, he would experience time dilation, meaning that time would have barely passed for him, but back on Earth, 47 years would have gone by. The flight of the navigator theory, if you will. That night, Sergei went back to his room, closed the door, and was never seen again. The hospital security <laughs> camera captured when he entered the room, but it never filmed him leaving. There was only one way out of this room, it was always watched, and the room windows had bars, so there was no way for him to escape without being noticed. Yeah, Sergei just pulled a Shawshank. 
vanished like a fart in the wind. Only there was no Raquel Welch poster to explain what happened to him. He was never found. No means of escape were ever found. He just vanished. Leaving the police with his camera, his photographs, and a crazy mystery to solve. A mystery that just keeps getting weirder. Because they investigated the case and they found out that there was actually a Sergei Ponomarenko that was declared missing in Kiev in 1960. They also were able to track down the woman in the photograph, his girlfriend, who was now over 70 years old at this point. She told the police that Sergei had disappeared that day in 1958, but returned just a few days later, the exact amount of time that he had been in 2006. But then she claimed that he disappeared again in the 1970s, and this time he was never seen again. But years after he vanished, she received a strange photo in the mail. It was from Sergei, and according to the note he wrote on there, the photo was from 2050. It shows an older mustachio Sergei with Keith in the background, only in this photo, the skyline is full of skyscrapers. Mm -hmm. He also said in the note that he would be back soon, which, for whatever reason, didn't happen. The story- I don't have this that much. I need this. Kiev is, yeah, 25th. But I don't think it, I still don't think it's going to look like that. The story of Sergei Ponomarenko has gone down in internet lore as possibly the most well-documented case of time travel in history. I see. You know, now might be a good time to introduce you guys to Woo Woo Alarm 2.0. What? Quick shout out to the video where I put on the Woo Woo Alarm for almost a full minute and people went ape in the comments. That uh, yeah, that's enough of that. Look, it's a great story, okay? I totally get why it became such an urban oh, yeah, legend. The problem is, everything that I could find on this, all the images that you've seen throughout this video, they all tie back to one TV show. It was a show called Aliens that aired on a Ukrainian channel called One Plus One in 2012. Mm. There were 10 episodes total. The episode that tells this story is the third episode. It's titled Time Traveler. It's an entire series about different stories of alien abductions and stuff. Other titles include Alien Abductions, Levitation <laughs> Effect, Phantom... Alien Abductions. I showed one to other <laughs> In crop circles. And the show actually featured a disclaimer at the beginning that translates to, quote, The Alien series aims to restore scenes of controversial topics. Any theory or hypothesis proposed cannot be considered to be correct, and further scientific research is required. All scene restorations are based on the statements of witnesses. There is no conclusive evidence to prove the existence of aliens. Your opinion on this issue is up to you. So, yeah, the show itself says any theory proposed cannot be considered to be correct. Yes. Okay. Than you ever get from the History Channel. And it's also careful to point out that these are scene restorations. So all these images of Sergei that keep showing up on every website and every video that talks about this story, those are all recreations. I mean, yeah. This is not real interview footage. Which kind of feels obvious to me, but I guess I spend more time around cameras than most people. And besides, there's a few pretty glaring details that are wrong in this episode. For example, the security camera footage displays the time as Tuesday, April 23rd, 2006. But if you pull up a calendar app on your phone, you'll see that April 23rd, 2006 was actually a Sunday. Oh, Others have pointed out that the ID card that you see on the show has the seal of the Communist Youth League stamped on it, but it's not the actual seal from that time period. I'm, I'm sure the art director was good, but you can never beat the internet. And then there's that picture from 2050. Yeah. It has buildings copied and pasted all over it, and I'm pretty sure that's the Empire State Building? So, yeah, those minor Photoshop. But the point is, those are recreations. Again, yeah. the show says it right up at the beginning. Fine. But according to the story, there was an ID, I there were the photos, there was a... Was supposed to be. I told you the picture you use that to... Recorded interview. So where are the real ones that they exist? All I can say is that my writer Jason and I, we searched all over the place and we couldn't find them anywhere. Nor could we find any actual police records, no other media reports, and I couldn't find anything on any of the key figures like Dr. Pablo Kuchikov or Vadim Poisner. Granted, some people don't have much of a web presence and there's definitely a language barrier here, but yeah, I, I couldn't find anything. Now, I don't know anything about this show. Um, if you're in Ukraine and you know something about it, please feel free to educate me and everybody else in the comments. But it comes across like one of those History Channel type shows where they yeah. take some urban legend yes, and then dramatize is. it. Like, I feel like this is just basically a good piece of creepypasta that the producers ran across and decided to run with. And they did a great job. Let's face it, they did a great job. It has taken on a life of its own. The credits list the scriptwriter as Konstantin Kovrigan, the director is Vladimir Rybus, and the producer is Alexei Labak, and the executive producer is Oleg Rogozna, who owned the station. Any of whom I would love to ask directly about this, but I wasn't able to find a way to contact them. So for me, the overwhelming evidence here is that this is just a work of fiction. 
and a great story. It is a All great right. story. But like, and don't take it any more seriously than you did that mermaid show on Animal Planet, which was actually a thing that happened. I hate this timeline. But I get, I get it. I get it. I totally get it. Time travel is a fascinating subject, and a lot of thought's been put into how it would actually work. For example, a paper published in Classical and Quantum Gravity in September 2020 suggested there's actually a way to travel backwards in time. They looked at Einstein's theory of relativity, specifically his calculations that show that it should be possible for an object in the universe to travel through space and time in a circular direction and end up back at the starting point. Einstein called it a closed time-like curve. But of course, physicists, when talking about time travel, they deal with uh, paradoxes like the grandfather paradox, you know. Uh, that's the idea that a time traveler goes back in the past and kills a younger version of her grandfather. This, of course, means the time traveler's parents weren't yeah. born, along with the time traveler herself, and if the time traveler didn't get born, then how would she have gone back to kill her grandfather? That whole thing. So the writers of this paper use what they call the billiard ball model to tackle this paradox. They say, imagine several billiard balls across a circular table. A circular table. So when you push one ball away from position X, it goes around the table and hits the other balls in a particular pattern. But the researchers calculated that even if the ball's pattern is messed with at some point during its journey, future interactions with the other balls can actually correct its path. The ball will come back to position X at the same speed that it would have if it hadn't been interfered with. Basically, the ball will fall into the same place. So they use this model to explain how if you did travel back in time, you could change events, but not significantly enough to really change the future. So like with the grandfather paradox, it would basically mean that something would always get in the way of you trying to kill him. As researcher Germain Turbar said, quote, No matter what you did, the salient events would just recalibrate around you. Try as you might to create a paradox, the events will always adjust themselves to avoid any inconsistency. Now, I think this paper is mostly just sort of an interesting thought experiment, but this does sound a bit like determinism. You know, like the idea that the world will just recalibrate around any changes you make in the timeline, kind of like a car navigation when you miss your exit. The big question, though, is what causes this recalibration? What holds this reality together? Is it a, a fundamental quantum force? The matrix? It's the power of Zoe? Unfortunately, it'll be a long time until we can test something like this and actually send an instrument or a person on a closed timeline curve. Until then, we'll just have to imagine it. Which we've kind of been doing this whole time. Yeah. I mean, one of the earliest ancient Sanskrit epic poems was called Mahabharata, and it was about time travel. I think maybe we're drawn to time travel boys. stories because time... <laughs> Until then, we'll just have to imagine it. Which we've kind of been doing this whole time. I mean, one of the earliest ancient Sanskrit epic poems was called Mahabharata, uh, and it was about time travel. I think maybe we're drawn to time. Uh, I have missed something. Seems when is that about time travel? Time travel stories, because time is the most insidious force in our lives. Time marches on, it never stops. We are ultimately at its mercy. And the greatest fantasy we have is to escape its grip. As professor of science fiction studies at Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta, Lisa Yazik told Life Science in 2022, quote, time travel tales let us imagine that we can break experience, either our own or as humanity as a whole. So maybe that's why this urban legend has struck such a chord online on the human experience, either our own or as humanity as a whole. So maybe that's why this urban, leg urban legend has struck such a chord online with everybody, you know? As disoriented and confused as he was, in some small way, we kind of all want to be Sergei. Okay, so this whole Sergei story kind of revolves around the whole idea that, you know, a UFO picked him up and carried him around yeah, at the speed of light and dropped him back on Earth 50 years or so later. Quite this is, of course, but, you know, an example of Einstein's theory of relativity in action which you all probably get the general gist of. You're smart people watching this, but why does that happen exactly? Now, if you think I'm gonna answer with some course on brilliant, well, you're right. It's, it's right there in the classical mechanics course. And this, in my opinion, is why brilliant is so powerful. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they take you all the way back to the basics of kinematics and Newton's laws and let uh, you work all the way up to reference frames, which yeah, I'm yeah, used to explain why. All right, guys, here we are. We are in the final four of Sketch Madness. There's only four left. You guys voted last week. There was only two votes, so it wasn't that big of a deal. 
Um, but uh, let's let's see. We're gonna find out right now who the last two are, what the last two sketches are. So here we go. So the four that we had lined up last week was the penis I'm designer just sketch. Because I think that's the actual video. Yeah, it was very interesting. I mean, the most convincing fiction in history. It's quite watertight for a fictional story. It's made up until, I mean, people only realize it after the internet and everything. Which, I mean, that tends to be the way most. That tends to be the way most. <laughs> Mysteries end up getting solved from the internet. 